What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Bass and Hannah podcast. So today we're going to talk about the true cost of hiring the wrong person. Let me start this off by saying that if you're trying to scale or build something big, uh, no one does it alone. You know, you always have to rely on other people and there is immense pressure when you're in a situation where you're growing faster than your staffing needs allow to hire quickly. What I want to talk about today is what happens when you rush too fast into that decision. So today what I want to talk about is what happens when you do it wrong. You know, it's it's one thing to look really good on paper, but the first piece of advice I would give is don't fall in love with anybody's resume. Everybody embellishes their resume. Another thing is that previous results aren't always a guarantee of future performance. Although we'd like to think that people are going to build on their historical success, the reality is that maybe somebody's best years are behind them. Uh, So what are the costs of hiring incorrectly? And I want to try to break this down. There's three that I can think of that are almost critically important. Number one, once you've realized that you've hired incorrectly, there's the awkward and inevitable moment where you have to let them go. And letting them go is not free. There's something called severance and you will almost certainly have to pay them, whether it's severance or just like the statutory two weeks notice or whatever it is, there's a financial implication to doing it wrong. You have to pay them money for the time that they've spent with you and you have to thank them for their service and allow them to move on. Cost number two is rehiring that position. You know, oftentimes you're going to be using a recruiter. Those things are, those people are not free. They do a great job, but they are not free. And that is another expense to your business. They will take both time and money to get you this new person that you probably wish you hired before. And finally, cost number three is the the lost time and effort that your company went in the wrong direction. Knowing that somebody is not right for the position and pulling the trigger and then rehiring and you know all of the expenses that go along with that, those either stall the growth of your company or they set it off in the wrong direction and then you have to correct course. So just think about all the costs that come along with that. It's time cost, there's money, there's time cost, there's money cost, there's, there's effort, and there's like brain activity and brain occupation that you're using to not build the business that you want to be building or moving in the direction that you want to be moving. That's why I think that people should often consider, you know, the unintended consequences or maybe the unconsidered consequences of hiring incorrectly. So Bassam, that's great. Thank you for telling me all the things that go wrong, you know, but what could I do to avoid making those pitfalls? Well, here are my steps to trying to avoid making the incorrect hire. So the first tip I would have in making sure that you're, you're hiring correctly is take your time when you're making the hiring decision. There is, like I said before, there, there is often a, like a rush or a pressure that you're feeling because by the time that you need that person, your business has probably grown past the point of comfort and you really need to fill that position so that they can take a load off or help you grow and expand. You have to resist that urge and make sure that you're taking the time and analyzing all of the applications and taking all the necessary exterior considerations for you to make the right decision. That's step one. Step two is make sure you are extremely clear in the job description that you're putting out. It's really easy to write an obscure abstract, you know, job description to try to attract a a variety of candidates, but that's 
not really going to help you. Also, with the technology that's available right now for people that are looking for a job to seek out employment, it, it'll actually help you greatly to filter out incorrect candidates by being very specific in your job descriptions. Step three, and this is probably more related to uh, the technical fields, but it probably, but it, it does apply to more broadly to everything, is test technical skills. If you're hiring an analyst, give them, give them a small piece of analysis to do on the spot. You know, if you're hiring a journalist, you know, test their writing skills. If you're hiring a, a like videographer or cameraman, be like, yo, here's a camera, show me what you can do with it. If you're and like and if you're hiring a mechanic, put them under the hood of a car and see what they can do. Uh, it, you you'd be very surprised at what you can learn by a just putting them in a position where they have to show you the skills that they're saying they have on paper. And it also gives you a sense of how they can respond in a, a you know, in a spontaneous and or like to a spontaneous request or, or an ad hoc request in in, a, in an environment where they may not be comfortable. And then finally, I would call references. This is something that it's old school knowledge, but oftentimes people overlook it or don't can't be bothered to do it. And I'm guilty of this myself sometimes. But you have to train yourself to be. To, you have to train yourself to take, again, that time to recruit properly because of all of the costs that we mentioned earlier. It doesn't make sense for you to kind of like fumble on the one yard line and say, yeah, you know what, they're probably, everything they're saying is probably true. You'd be surprised when you call people, there's either glowing reviews about this person or it'll, I don't think anybody will talk bad about anybody else. I also think that's, that's really bad form, but you can pick up things in their tone. If, if they're, what they're leaving out can often sometimes help you make a decision. You know, if you, if you felt like, ah, I'm not sure this person was kind of like uh, difficult here and there, or they couldn't answer this question properly, ask about that, you know? And if the person that, that's giving them the reference is like, no, absolutely. They, they're so good at it. You know, they're, they're, I have great experience with them. Then that's one thing. But if, they're saying, ah, you know, like, uh, they're okay, but uh, blah, 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 or like, you know, they're kind of giving you these like passive answers, then that can give you some insight too. The, the whole goal of this is to make sure that you're getting as much information and data points as you can while you have the opportunity to make that decision. Because once you've made that hire, whether you like it or not, at least for the short term, you're married to that person and the divorce is never free. I'll give you an example from my own life, actually two examples. Um, I hired people based on past experience and, uh, and, and resumes. And, like, I've done this before where I'm like, man, these people are so much better or they're so accomplished. Um, and then I, I brought them into, into our atmosphere, or our environment, and they did not succeed. You know, And what I realized was, their success was a product of the situation and the work environment that they were in before and not necessarily created by them, right? And, and you have to be able to, to identify those differences, you know, is, is this person successful because of where they were or did they make where they were successful? Um, the second example I'll give is uh, I had, I, I hired somebody who I, like I bought into their hype. You know that I, like I bought into what they were saying and 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 what I what they told me they could accomplish and, and it was, I was like man I'm making the right decision these people are perfect you know but what I realized is their best skill was selling themselves because when it came time to do the work their actions were not nearly as impressive as the hype that they built for themselves and in both those situations it cost our businesses dearly and exiting those situations was not it was not cheap and it also takes an emotional toll on you and it takes an emotional toll on the business um, your employees get attached to each other uh, and there's like camaraderie there so all of that put together is is the reasons why you want to make sure that you're taking those steps to try and hire correctly and, and making sure you do your due diligence now before i kind of end this off i want to let you know that there is 
very little to no chance that you're going to do it right all the time, right? And like, like with everything that I say, failure is almost inevitable in everything that you do, including the hiring process. But what I'm hoping this does is allows you to take a step back and evaluate that that hiring decision is critical and it takes a long time to undo. Um, it's okay if you get it wrong, everybody will, uh, because no one stays in their job forever. Uh, but hopefully using those steps, uh, you know, uh, taking your time through, through the recruitment process, writing a very clear job description, testing technical skills, and calling references, you will be able to limit the amount of times that you hire unsuccessfully, uh, which will help your business grow much faster. That's our podcast for today. Thank you for tuning in.